expand. Well, what I'm suggesting to you here is that these UFO folks know how to do all of that. Now, here's my cartoon of a UFO there, and I've showed these two looking circular things. That's a cross-sectional cut of a proposed current carrying ring that's in the hull of the ship. And it, it, the, the lines there represent the magnetic field. Now, if the ship is moving along with a magnetic field provided by this current carrying ring, another phenomena happens. That at right angles to the magnetic field, by that little funny equation up there, E equals V cross B, an electric field is experienced or formed by a moving magnetic field, and it just so happens it's a crossed EB field like I just showed you, and if a plasma is put in that, you know, if you make that plasma cloud around the UFO by microwave burst, well, what will happen is, is that I've shown on the screen here, these little circles with those arrows in them. The circle is, a, that, again, that magnetic field, and the little arrow now represents the electric field that is generated by the motion of the magnetic field, and you'll notice that they're at right angles to each other. If you get the physics book out and actually work the equations, this moving ring, I've gotten rid of the, the hull of the UFO, I'm just talking about the ring itself now. If that ring is moving along through a plasma cloud, it interacts it in such a way as it moves the, the cloud towards the ship and compresses it. Yeah, it's really kind of neat. Yeah, so it's built into that geometry of a current carrying ring that if you sling it through the atmosphere, and let's say it's a superconducting ring, and it runs into the plasma, it'll pull the plasma right on by itself. Now, we can't talk about all the specifics of, of proposed ways they do this in great detail. It's far too complex, and I don't know all the solution myself. But this is what I, I see them doing in a lot of the ships. Not all, but a lot of them. Uh, more typical effects. Uh, UV radiation sunburn from plasma cloud. When you start putting an instantaneous intensity of 2 billion watts out in a microwave pulse, making this plasma cloud, you've got all kinds of electrons generated, you know, torn off of atoms and molecules, but they very quickly recombine, they, they try to, and during the recombining process, an, an awful lot of ultraviolet light is, a gener is generated. So if you're relatively close to this landed craft, you know, you're walking over to see what the thing is, and it lights up its engines and starts to take off, you can get a sunburn. You know, oh, God, is that mother bright. Um, electrical systems in cars and aircraft go haywire, stop. But strictly mechanical diesel engines, diesel engines are not disrupted at all. Uh, this, again, shows a cross-sectional cut. Those two little black dots, that's the current carrying ring. And then those little dashed lines are the symbols for the magnetic field that uh, go with a ring like that. And of course, the, if I did the drawing better and more, it would go way out across the stream. In other words, this field extends really great in all directions. But it does fall off relatively quickly in strength. But imagine the width of those, that ring there is like 30 or 40 feet, the, the standard sort of reported disk that people see. Uh, and let's also imagine that the field strength around uh, the, the ship right, the ship is something like maybe a million gauss, and like two million times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field that's in this room. Well, one of the things you start to realize if you study physics and whatnot, you go, well, that's a dipole field, and, it's the, and if I know that strength there, and I know its dimension, then I can calculate for you what the magnetic field is 300 feet out that way. What you start to find out is, it can be like 20, 30, 40, 50,000 gauss. That's a really strong magnetic field. So if you're on this mountain highway or a country highway where you're at by yourself, lonely at night, you're driving along, and all of a sudden your headlights start dimming out, your engine starts to sputter, and the thing dies on you, you pull off the side of the road. It won't start. It won't do nothing. Then all of a sudden you notice that something's happening out there, and you see a light uh, thing comes up out of the brush over that way and goes... And all of a sudden, your lights come back on, you start it, and it runs fine. You know, how do you explain the thing like that? Well, the car has a thing called a spark coil, and here is an electronic a schematic of what a, your car spark coil looks like. It's got this iron core, that's the three parallel lines. It's got a primary winding, which purposes is to put electric current in a coil around the iron. Once you do that, you polarize the iron, you build a strong magnetic field in the iron, and then you turn off that current real quick. When that happens, the core depolarizes, 
with the other coil, the secondary, wound around it, and this high-voltage surge is, uh, is generated, and that's what runs your spark for your chamber that sets off the gasoline and makes your car run. Well, this transformer is designed to run in a specific, a specific, and my pointer, can you see that, by the way, that red line, that dot? Okay, well, some people can. There's a very steep uh, curve over here. You don't have to understand anything about that curve except this. This transformer on the left is designed to run on that steep climbing range. It only works in that steep climbing range, and that only holds true if there's no big, strong external magnetic field like 20, 40, 30, 50,000 gauss coming from that UFO landed over there. If that fuel is in your car, this, this iron core is saturated, and whatever the primary winding does, doesn't matter. It can't, you can't polarize it anymore. And if you can't polarize it and unpolarize it, then you don't get your, 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 your spike of voltage. So in other words, these very strong external magnetic fields take out car spark coils. Uh, but if you've got a diesel that doesn't have a spark coil <laughs> that just mechanically squirts fuel in at the right time, it is not affected. You just drive on by. Now this here is a little piece of wire. Any pick any piece of wire in your car, or, or particularly let's pick it to be a little section of a, of a wire that's running to your headlights. Well normally, um, magnetic field from the earth doesn't mess with electric current in the wire at all. But again, if you've got this external magnetic field from a flying saucer that reaches up to 30, 40, 50, 60, 100,000 uh, gauss, well, an interesting phenomena happens. These electrons that would normally just kind of go bing, 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 carrying the current and the wire, they, start, they now start to make these circular motions. And once the steel gets strong enough, the circular uh, radius of curvature gets smaller than the diameter of the wire, and now it becomes electrically very resistive. So you're wasting all your power in your wire instead of the, the headlights, and your headlights start dimming out. And the same thing also happens to your spark coil. So the spark coil gets killed two ways, by what I just showed you, plus this method. Uh, ground heating caused by induction heating slash microwaves. Here's our saucer. It's landed for whatever reason. It's out at Farmer John's place taking its annual seven-year soil sample to see how fast we're killing the planet. Uh, but Louis forgot to turn off the white microwave when he landed, or he's really nervous about the farmer coming out, so he keeps it warming up. And he bakes the ground around the craft, maybe down two or three feet even, and it's real hard. Or you can also have the current carrying ring having an oscillating back and forth current. That will cause induction currents in the soil, which will heat it up. It's conduction heating. Uh, physiological effects. People nearby often feel tingling sensations, burning sensations, strange humming noises, and paralysis. And they're all quite related. Uh, the tingling sensations quite often will happen because the ship not only has these very strong static magnetic fields, but it also has uh, oscillating magnetic fields. It can be oscillating at a pretty high rate. And when they do that, if it's strong enough and you're there, it induces eddy currents in your body. And that can trip your nerves to fire. And you'll, you'll kind of just feel it as tingling, okay, if it's weak. If it starts to get a stronger intensity... It'll feel like burning. Your brain will interpret, God, I'm burning. What is this? Um, strange humming noises. If you pulse microwaves, like that UFO we were showing earlier, at around, let's say, 600 pulses uh, uh, per second, you'll hear that as a 600 uh, cycle and its harmonics uh, in your hearing system as long as the microwave intensity goes over a certain threshold to trigger the auditory nerves. 